Hi everybody! So I recently got a comment asking if I could make a video talking about finding and applying to conservation internships as well as how to kind of like beef up your resume when you don't have an internship. And I've wanted to make a video like this for a while because I think conservation internships are really difficult to find. Um, but I wasn't like super confident, I had the most uh, knowledge on the subject, but earlier this year I spent a really long time and a lot of energy applying to a ton of internships and that whole application process ended up being really successful. So I feel a little bit more confident talking about the subject and I'm excited to share with you guys. So let's get started. American graduate programs in conservation either explicitly require or just tacitly expect that their applicants will have accrued a certain number of hours of pre-program experience, which is just working under a conservation professional in the context of a conservation lab environment. Schools abroad like Cardiff University in Wales or the University of Torino in Italy don't have as stringent requirements as the North American program, so I'm really going to focus on the ones here. So pre-program work can be done in a variety of settings, including a museum setting, um, university library, a private practice, a regional center, among others. And you could be doing a variety of different things. Um, the North American programs really do want to see that you have hands-on experience working in a lab doing conservation treatment. Um, and that is helpful in a number of different ways. So first, it's really helpful just kind of like personally as a as someone who's looking towards the field of conservation to ensure that like this is the field that you really want to work in. Conservation can require a lot of detailed handwork, a lot of fine motor skills, a lot of focus, and sometimes that's not the best fit for everybody. So it is good to kind of experience the workplace environment, experience the tasks that you'd be doing to see that yes, indeed, this is a good fit for you. It's also really helpful to figure out kind of what specialization you might want to go into when you do get to grad school, what materials you enjoy working with. It's also great to experience what kind of tools and materials you're going to end up working with throughout your career to kind of gain those hand skills working with those. You could also be working in kind of more preventive conservation work, which is less on the hands-on side and more on the prophylactic, kind of protective, preventive measures of conservation. So for example, I currently am working at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, working with a collection of woven Pacific mats, and I'm re-rolling these mats using more archival materials as well as imaging them and creating 3D models so that when people and when researchers want to look at these maps in the future, they can first look at the models, look at the pictures before unrolling and potentially damaging those maps uh, in the process. So this is definitely more on the kind of preventive measures side uh, with a little bit of conservation treatment sprinkled in, but it's still very much relevant to the field of conservation. So next, finding internships. The first step to getting an internship is actually finding it, which can honestly be one of the hardest parts if you don't know where to look. So I have compiled like a long list of websites that I, when I'm going through an application process, just check religiously every day to see kind of what has come up, has come up in the past day, hour, week. Um, so I'm gonna highlight a few of my favorites but again, I've linked all the rest of those in the description. Um, so my number one is the University of Delaware's Jazz and Internship Database. And I love this site so much because it's so streamlined towards uh, conservation internships, towards pre-programmed conservation internships. And they have almost all the information that you need. They have kind of the due date, they have the link to the website, they have the salary, um, the time period, all of those things. Um, there's also kind of a jobs tab in addition to the internships tab. Um, the jobs tab is not as helpful for me in this current season of my pre-program life, um, but in the future I'll definitely be checking it out post-grad school. I also subscribe to Muse Weekly, which is a weekly email newsletter that is put on by the University of Delaware. 
and this is less streamlined towards just conservation internships um, and more focused on museum careers in general, uh, but it's still super helpful uh, because it comes straight to your email. You don't have to go like look for anything on your browser. It comes right to you. And it also provides information about a variety of different professional development experiences, um, things like upcoming webinars, uh, upcoming conferences, calls for research papers, things like that. So super helpful. Beyond those specific sites, uh, definitely just if you have an institution, a museum or a university that you are really passionate about and you really enjoy, uh, check their websites, go to their search bar and type in internships, um, check in with like an HR person or an education person at the institution and see if they offer anything. Um, and if they don't that semester, then check again the next semester. Sometimes institutions are able to provide internships one year and not the next, um, so you never know. But yeah, keep an eye on those if there's an institution you're really kind of gunning for and really want to work at. And then this is just kind of a good general resource as an emerging conservation professional. Um, the Emerging Conservation Professionals Network has a Facebook page, which is a fantastic forum for people who just want to ask questions, who want to stay abreast of like what's happening in the field of conservation, um, whether that be conferences or uh, class opportunities that are being put on. Um, I have posted in there to see if I can talk to anybody from a specific grad school that I was interested in. And I was able to have some lovely FaceTime calls with some girls who commented on my post. So if you have questions, if you need advice, it's a great place to put in those questions. Um, people are always really helpful and kind and, and prompt with their answers. Lastly, do some research. Do some Googling to find a private practices, a private conservator in your area. Um, in addition to like cold Googling, you can also go on the American Institute for Conservation's website. They have this resource called Find a Conservator where you can search for an art conservator by zip code and by specialization. And so if you find somebody that you're interested in, do a little research on them, maybe email them, see if they're offering lab tours or if you could schedule a lab tour with them and see if they maybe have a need for an intern. Um, I have found that conservators like writ large are really usually really open to talking about their work and are excited to have people um, learn about the field. So definitely send a lovely email and if they don't need an intern, hey at least you've networked. Again, I've linked all those sites and links that I just talked about in the description as well as about a dozen others, um, so definitely check them out and I hope they're helpful. When thinking about applying to and accepting an internship, make sure that it's paid. The field of conservation has had a long history of only really being accessible to people who can take unpaid work, who can volunteer their time, um, and that's not all of us, and it doesn't have to be all of us. And thankfully, more recently, institutions have been providing internships that do offer a living wage, which is fabulous. Um, I've heard a lot of stories of people who spent a lot of time volunteering and uh, taking unpaid work at institutions and that's the only way that they felt like they could get to grad school. And if that is an option, if that's financially possible for you, then there's no downside to it, 100% go for it. But if that's not you, if that's not fiscally possible, um, you don't have to volunteer. Uh, I was encouraged by one of my former supervisors to never take an unpaid position. If you can't find a paid conservation opportunity, then find a job that is in an adjacent field to conservation and work there until you are able to work in a conservation lab. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to grow your hand skills, to grow your um, experience in database management, in collections management, in working with uh, objects, working with different materials. Um, you just kind of have to be creative. So for example, uh, in the summer of 2020, I worked for a, a firm that was building laser sights for handguns. Uh, and that was really helpful for me in growing my fine motor skills and my attention to detail. And that's something that I was able to bring up in my interview for the National Park Service position. Um, I was able to say that like, yes, I have gone through this job that has really grown my ability to be aware of fine details. And I am now like a little bit more of a perfectionist than I was before. So 
All that to say, you don't have to volunteer your time in order to make it to grad school. Um, there's a lot of opportunities that will like help you survive and live uh, in our society with money. Next, applying to internships. Um, the application process is like much like every other internship application process, so I'm not going to go crazy on details here, but I am going to give a few brief tips as well as discussing letters of recommendation. So first, um, just as you're looking towards applying, be aware of kind of the calendar year of when internships show up and when they're due, uh, and make sure that you have a resume, a CV, and then a kind of form cover letter that you can tweak and adjust for each internship that comes along. And as always, make sure you have somebody read over your uh, materials and preferably somebody who is aware of the field of conservation and aware of what future employers might be looking for. Also, when asking for letters of recommendation, make sure you do that well ahead of time. I tend to go for like about a month. That might be too long, it might be too short. Not sure, that's just my MO. So when I ask somebody for a letter of rec, I usually start out by sending them an email. First, describing a little bit of what I've been up to since I've worked with them or studied under them, as well as reminding them of my career trajectory and where I'm at along that process. Then I ask them if they'd be willing to provide me some letters of recommendation, giving them a little bit of an estimate of how many internships I'll be applying to, with the caveat that there might also be more coming as new internships crop up. Um, and I found that when asking for letters, people are usually really gracious when they get back to you. Um, they understand, especially if they are in the humanities fields, um, they understand how much effort it takes to kind of break into these types of fields. And so if you're somebody like me who's kind of like freaked out by asking somebody for a letter of rec, um, just be aware that like they know what's up. They have asked for their own share of letters of recommendation and like, we will be the ones providing letters of rec for people further down the road, hopefully in the future. So don't be intimidated by it. Um, kind of bite the bullet and ask um, because people will know what you're going through. They know how difficult it is. So if they do say yes, I first will thank them profusely and then give them kind of a description of as many internships as I kind of know about at that moment that are kind of upcoming. So I usually go with like, here are the first five that are due within the next month. Here's the title of the internship, the description of what I'd be doing, and then how you will be submitting your letter of rec, whether that be through a portal, submitting directly to the institution, or giving it to me and then I send it to the institution. Um, just try to make it as clear as possible for the recommenders. So they have as little work to do as possible. Um, another way you could do this, which I haven't tried, but somebody suggested to me, is to create like a Google Sheet with all of that same information just laid out in a spreadsheet format. Um, and I'm sure that's really helpful. I think I like being able to email my recommender saying like, okay, in the next two weeks, here's what's happening. Like just ha so they have a ping in their inbox. Um, but definitely do whatever works for you and your recommender, uh, what, depending on your communication styles. And lastly, I will send a thank you note and a gift if it's appropriate um, and kind of keep them updated as I hear back from internships. So lastly, what do you do if you don't get a conservation internship? Well, what you don't do is freak out. Um, it is really difficult to find internships, especially if you're first starting out and haven't ever had those types of experiences and it can seem like an impossible task to get to grad school. But again, do not freak out. There's a whole world of hobbies and jobs and other things you can engage in while you're kind of waiting on that next internship cycle. So I graduated college in 2020, which if you remember that year, it like was not the greatest for in-person hands-on experiences. So Thankfully, the American Institute for Conservation was very well aware of that, and so they put out this really helpful document uh, that described a lot of different things you could do while sheltering in place to continue to work towards beefing up your resume for grad school. So I wanted to highlight a couple of my favorite things that they put on this document. Again, this document will be linked in the description below. Um, but yes, I wanted to highlight some of the things that I personally found very helpful during 2020 while I was waiting for um, the next internship application cycle. So first, 
make things. So conservation is first and foremost a really hands-on field and you will never go wrong by spending time learning about different artistic techniques. Um, and this doesn't have to be an expensive process. You don't have to drop like $300 on a glass blowing class. You can pick up some air dry clay at Hobby Lobby and make hand raised pots. Uh, you can take printer paper and a mechanical pencil and work on your sketching skills. You can take a block of wood and a knife and carve something. Um, I spent some time teaching myself how to embroider um, using a $20 Amazon set with some like embroidery thread and one single bamboo hoop and like cotton from Walmart and I started selling my embroidery and I like it became a really great hobby for me and that hobby was something that I actually I think it got me my National Park Service internship because I knew my way around a needle and thread and I had some concept of what it was like to work with textiles, I was able to obtain a textile conservation internship. Um, so again, you'll never waste time learning more art skills and it'll always be beneficial. And that's something you can also put in your CV in like your relevant skills section. Um, and that's something you will probably be able to talk about in future interviews. Next is watching webinars. So something I did in 2020 was binge like all of the webinars that the Emerging Conservation Professionals Network had put on their website. And this was super educational. They had webinars which were like an hour to two hours long talking about anything from how to build an art portfolio for grad school applications to how to run your own private practice. And so that was, first of all, very like edifying and educational, but then also I made it kind of into a networking opportunity. I emailed one of the conservators who was featured in the private practice webinar, and I was able to kind of have a nice Zoom chat with him about my career, and I was able to get advice from him on how to continue working towards grad school when I don't have an internship. And kind of by a weird coincidence, I will be working in a lab adjacent to his this fall uh, at the Yale Institute for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage. So I'm like really excited to meet him in person. But that's just an example of like how you can <laughs> manipulate these experiences into something that really like is beneficial for you. You can watch a webinar, reach out to the person and say, I saw you in this webinar and I would really like to talk to you. And they're usually like really kind and gracious and willing to talk. So that's also another thing you can put in your CV. It can, by putting, having like a relevant webinar or relevant conference section, um, you should, can show uh, potential interviewers that like you are really invested in the field. You're spending time learning and growing in knowledge about conservation as a field. So lastly, you can spend time in your pre-program experience taking classes or reading. North American graduate programs have a very specific set of coursework prerequisites uh, that you need before applying to grad school. And so if you were not able to finish that up during undergrad, pre-program is a great time to finish all that up. And if you did finish, uh, then don't stop learning. Keep reading, keep uh, doing research on your own. So I've linked some of my favorite conservation and like conservation adjacent books and articles in the description below. And these have actually been applicable for me uh, in that I was able to talk about them in my interview for my upcoming research internship. And I was able to link some of my like interest in color and pigments to a project that uh, my supervisor is working on right now at IPCH. So again, just like creating art and watching webinars, you like literally never go wrong. You'll never waste your time by doing reading on your own, doing research and gaining insight into um, the field of conservation as a whole. Well, that is all I have. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I hope it was helpful. Um, I am very passionate about making sure people are aware of what conservation is and how to kind of break into the field because it can kind of be a little bit of a maze. Um, as always, if I've said something that is like totally incorrect or you just have more things to add, please let me know in the comments. I would very much welcome the insight. Um, uh, like and subscribe or press the bell. I don't really know how people end their YouTube videos. Um, I will say that I'm hoping and like trying to put together a like week in the life of my time here in Chicago at the Field Museum of Natural History just to kind of give a little glimpse of what that's been like because it's been really fun. So keep your eyes peeled for that and I hope to see you soon. Bye!